The purpose of this lecture is to learn how to linearize a graph that is curved. We want to linearize a graph. We're going to make an adjustment to our data so that our data appears as a straight line. We're doing this because without calculus, we do not know how to find the slope of anything except for a straight line. So this will allow us to analyze our data without needing to have any calculus skills. Step number one is to take your original data, your x and y data points, and make a graph of it, as we have shown already done here on the slide. You can make that graph by hand, or you can make it on your iPad using graphical analysis, or if you have access to Microsoft Excel, that works as well. You want to have the independent variable on the x-axis, in this case that would be time, and the dependent variable on the y-axis, in this case that would be position. So once you have the data graph, then you want to identify what kind of relationship that you have. In this example, because my pattern looks like this, I'm going to identify it as a top opening parabola. And we learned that the adjustment that you can make to linearize, to straighten a top opening parabola is to replot the data with the x values all squared. So now we're going to take a look at our, this is the original data table that was plotted on the graph on the previous slide. We want to take the x value, which was time, and we want to adjust it by squaring all of the values. So we're going to add a new um, column to our data table, and that column is going to be time squared. And because we squared the time, we also square the units, they will be in seconds squared. So I'm just going to go down the row and do my squaring. 0 squared is 0, 1 squared is 1, 2 squared is 4, 3 squared is 9, 16, 25, 36, 49, and 64. So we have adjusted all of our data by squaring the x because we had a top open parabola relationship. In step three, we're going to graph the adjusted data. If you compare this graph to the original graph, you'll see that the main difference is that we have put now time squared on the x-axis. So every point that we plotted here is time squared as the x-coordinate and position as the y-coordinate. And you'll see, if you've done this step correctly, that your graph will be a straight line. Step four is to take this line, and now that our data appears linear, you should know how to determine the slope and how to determine the y-intercept. So you've drawn your line of best fit, a line that touches as many of the points as possible, but a straight line. We're going to pick out two points that are on that line of best fit. I tend to pick points that are at a crosshairs on the grid because it's really easy to pick out their coordinates. And it's not really a good idea to get in the habit of picking a data point because data points may not always be exactly on that line of best fit that you've drawn. So I'm going to pick this point here because it's really easy to um, figure out the coordinates. It's right at a grid mark. This is 20 comma 60. And I think the next good point I see is this one right here, because it's also at a grid mark. And that one is 40 and 120. So probably a review for you that slope is equal to the change in the y values over the change in the x values. So if we take the two particular points we're looking at, 120 minus 60 over 40 minus 20, which is equal to 60 over 20, and that reduces to 3. The other thing we want to consider when we're determining the slope is the units of slope. Because we have y over x, we want to look at the y units, which were centimeters, divided by the x units, which were Therefore, the units of our slope will be centimeters for every second squared. And our slope with units is 3 centimeters for every second squared. We also want to determine the y-intercept. And the y-intercept 
is going to be the point where the line of best fit hits the y-axis. And you can really just extend your line to the y-axis and make an estimate of where it is. For this graph, the y-intercept appears to be 0, and it will always have the same unit. It's a y-value, so it will have the units of the y-axis, in this case, centimeters. The last step is to use our linear graph to write our mathematical model. y equals mx plus b is really kind of your template. So I'm going to write it really big here and use it to figure out my equation. When I see y, I want to write the variable that's on the y-axis. If I go back to my graph, we had position, which I'll just abbreviate with a p, on the y-axis. For slope, we're going to plug in the number that we calculated on the last slide, which was 3, and its units were centimeters for every second squared. For x, we're going to plug in the variable that was plotted on our x-axis, and it was time squared, because our linear graph had time squared on the x-axis. And finally, plus b, our y-intercept was 0. You do not have to have the plus zero for this particular example because you don't need to write zero. But we have included units for slope and y-intercept. And we have written our equation in terms of the specific variables in our problem, which are position and time. So you have successfully straightened a nonlinear graph and written a mathematical model for that describes that graph.